Alrighty, hey everyone, welcome back to another abilities tier list and for this video we're going to be going over the best W's. I understand the typical order would be to go from Q to W to E, but the thing with Q's is that they tend to either be pretty straightforward, the most bare bones ability in a champion's kit, their main source of damage, and it tends to generally not have that much nuance, right? Like everyone's Q is for the most part, you know, barring exceptions, just the damaging tool, right? That every champion needs to have one. In other cases, they also tend to be very contextual. For instance, uh, let's say Darius Q. Not Darius Q. Um, what's an, what's, an, what's a good example? I'm trying to think of like Katarina. Katarina's Q, Bouncing Blade, is merely to get her blade on the ground so that she can pick it up and activate her passive. A lot of these champions, their Q intertwines with the rest of their abilities, and so when evaluated in standalone, they're not the most enticing. W, however, is normally a champion's source of utility, which can easily be transferred over to another champion and create a whole bunch of possible interactions that would be a lot more interesting. So we're skipping Q and we're going into W instead. The order is pretty much the same as the previous video. We have top 10, we have good as f that is basically busted, I changed the, uh, the names a bit. Solid, usable, subpar, booty. Um, I understand that the, actually maybe I should change this to usable slash niche just to include the possibility of some abilities having a niche or whatnot. If not, I can actually just make another category down below. There you go. So we have a category for a niche. So we have quite a few tiers, and as per usual, the ability will be evaluated without the context of the champion's kit. So the reason why I have like a question mark question mark is that if a champion's ability very closely, or rather if a champion's ability is closely linked to their entire gameplay, then they'll be put here for no better reason other than you need the entire champion's kit for that ability to function. But for the most part, the abilities will be isolated in a vacuum. And just like before, AD AP ratios or any of that kind of scaling metrics will try our best to create a general theme, like with or without it. But for the most part, I'm going to keep the existing ratios on top. So for example, if the champion has an AP ratio, we're assuming that that ability will be going to AP champions or Maybe they can go to 80 champions if there's a purpose for it, but since W tends to be a champion's utility spell, not so much their damage, it doesn't really take that much precedence, but either way, let's uh, not waste any more time and get started. First ability is going to be Aatrox, Infernal Chains. Infernal Chains is usable. The interesting thing about Infernal Chains is that it doesn't really pertain to anything other than keeping the champion in place or at least attempting to, but there are better ways to do that. You can just get hard CC or on-demand hard CC, so... Infernal Chains is okay, it has a use, it could be also used to like range, uh, last hit minions from range, but generally it's one of the more mild abilities out there. In fact, I might actually put it subpar. RSW's Foxfire, it's it's decent, it's just uh, you know, a little bit of supplementary damage at auto targets, it could be used to last hit a couple minions or just to apply some extra DPS to a target, not too special. Macaulay's Twilight Shroud, it is good as f This move doesn't require a Kali's full kit to be used. Yes, you might want like the bonus energy and whatnot, but the fact that you can dip in and out of stealth can make this such a good ability for dueling, for assassination. A lot of other champions can make use of Twilight Shroud rather nicely. Next one's gonna be Akshan. Going Rogue is niche. So Going Rogue could be valuable. Actually, no, I might, I might put it in solid because not so much for the stealth part, but for the passive component, which is uh, the revive. And having a revive, Automatically, I might actually just put this in good as but um, mm, I don't know, it's because you're effectively forfeiting an ability. This is fine, but it's too niche. It's better to just pick, you know, some other stealth type ability like Shaco's Deceive, Twitch's Ambush, something like that. But just the ability to revive champions will be critical in the late game, regardless of what champion you play. So if you play someone with a lot of high kill power, or you can even attach this to a ranged champion, like a backline champion such as Zerath, who can safely kill whoever just killed your teammate without having to expose himself in return. Next one's going to be Alistar Headbutt. Headbutt's a solid disengage slash engage tool. Yes, you kind of want Pulverize to go along with it, but even just having the ability to like headbutt someone, like if you have, let's say, some way to get into the enemy backline, like a free target dash, then you could dash and behave as an insect. So it's essentially an insect type. Uh, it's like at least an ultimate type ability. It's pretty good. Amumu's W is usable. It's just persistent damage around you, you know, in an area. You also do get, uh, oh no, the tantrum passive is on tantrum rather, but the reason why this ability is so threatening on Mumu is because he has cursed touch. Without it, it's okay. It's it, it has a purpose, right? It could be used for persistent damage and it can actually do quite a bit if you go AP, but for the most part, I think Mumu would just be perfectly fine, very average. 
a Nivea's wall. A Nivea's wall I'm going to put in subpar. It works for her because she has a way to trap you in her, like, you know, in a certain area with her glacial storm. But for every other champion, I really don't see a reason why you would want this. Like, maybe you could put this on, I don't know, Poppy, and so she can create her own walls to burst through, but then you'd be losing on Steadfast Presence, and therefore, you know, I'd feel like not really anyone's first choice. Annie's W is just a very typical damaging ability. That's it. It would be a lot better if it had the stun, but without the stun, it's just damage. Ophelios question mark because he doesn't have a W, it's just weapon change. Ash's W is solid. It is also damage, however, it's in a very wide cone. Now, they did kind of remove the harass potential of this ability since it doesn't really have that much base damage compared to like when it used to before. Like if we scroll down here, uh, Vol used to do a lot more damage back when it had like I think 120 AP ratio. I forget when they made that change, but it's still a very good ability. It's good to have, just get some damage, some coverage. You can even use to uh, check brushes, you know, just to make sure. But you won't get the slow effect, unfortunately, since you need the frost shot. But still, it's good damage. A Soul's W is the black hole thingy. It's probably subpar. It's good on A Soul, since he can rack up um, the Celestial, or rather, uh, Stardust with it. But, oh no, this is his, uh, his roaming ability. Mm. Then in that case, I might put it in niche. Some champions might want to use this pretty nicely because you could still cast abilities, you know, while flying about. Um, it says that you can cast Breath of Light specifically, but we can assume that if you have any champion with a Q-type ability, like, I don't know, you want to use Zareth or something, then you could do kind of drifting type thing. It's, it's okay, it has purposes, but I would say it's niche. Azir is probably question mark. Well, I'm going to say subpar because you can conjure sand soldiers but you can't redirect them or dash towards them so it's in fact i might put it in booty but at the same time it's a decent neutral tool even if you just count only the w bard's w is the caretaker shrine it's probably usable it is a token bit of health and movement speed whenever you just let it sit and if it kind of like matures and goes into the empowered version then you can heal for a lot more but for the most part i keep saying for the most part that's going to be the word i'm spamming for today um, for the most part, it's it's okay. There are better healing abilities out there. It's not bad, it's just not great. Belvet's W is just a knockup in a straight line, but that's pretty good. It's a fast knockup. You don't get the reset on her Q, but you don't need to. This does a decent amount of damage. It has 125% EP ratio too, so if you put this on an EP champion, that's fantastic. Blisscrank's W is subpar. If you're looking for more movement speed and attack speed, you could pick any other buff besides this. This one slows you, so you have no reason to take it. Brands is usable. It's just a pillar of flame. You don't get the blaze component out of it, but it does a decent amount of damage in a wide area, and uh, it could be used to just harass. It's okay. Uh, Brahm's W is stand behind me, or is it unbreakable, actually? I need to remember. It is stand behind me. Stand behind me is good. It's a dash ability that you can be used on an ally or a minion. It gives both of your resistances. It's not bad. I would say it's a pretty solid ability and it could be used for a decent amount of playmaking potential. It's not as, I guess, open-ended as, I would say, Leap Strike or uh, Safeguard in terms of mobility. But the fact that it does give a fair, fairly high amount of resistances is quite valuable to have. Like, I wouldn't, I would imagine giving this to, I don't know, I would, I would, I would honestly replace Blitzcrank W with this. Next one's gonna be Briar W. It is probably usable. The one downside to Briar's W is that you don't have, you won't have the ability to cancel it with Chilling Scream. However, my guess is that you can probably find a different ability to use because her Blood Frenzy is like, you know, it's a highlight of her kit. It's the benchmark of her kit, and it does a crap ton of damage, especially with Snack Attack. So. This could actually be abused on other characters if you give, let's say, you can replace Head Rush with you know, Jax's Leap Strike or something. In fact, I wouldn't imagine if Jax had Blood Frenzy. That'd be interesting. In fact, I might actually put it in solid. Caitlyn's W is Yordle Snap Trap. It's a very solid ability. It's good for control. You don't get the bonus range out of it because if memory serves, you can only get that from her passive. I'm not sure, actually. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's just for traps. But it's 1.5 second root, the traps last almost indefinitely. Actually no, they only last for like 50 seconds. That's still a long time. You can use it to zone off an entire area and it just makes sure that like people can't really cross without being made visible. It's a good control tool, in fact I think, yeah I might put it in solid, I'll just leave it there. 
Camille's W is usable. Hextech Sweep is her least important ability. It's good for neutral harass, it can be used to wave clear if you have a couple minions out there. There are better Ws to take if you're just looking for that kind of ability, but it does have the property of dealing max health damage and healing, which could be useful. But again, we have a ton of other abilities to go through. Cassiopeia's W Miasma, good as f This move breaks characters. Some champions just cannot function with Miasma in play, and unlike Poppy's Steadfast Presence, this thing lasts for 5 seconds. It's in a fixed area, and it covers a much wider area. You don't really care too much about like the magic damage and slow, just the ability to inhibit enemy flashes, dashes, anything like that could just destroy some champion's ability to function. So it's a really, really broken ability. Trogoth's Feral Scream is solid. It's a large AoE silence. It does a decent amount of magic damage. If you put this on a uh, ranged champion or any kind of AP champion, they get a lot of harass damage and a really long silence, which can be very beneficial for some team fights. Corky's W Valkyrie is a solid ability. It's a dash that leaves behind a trail of fire under it. You don't get the special delivery because that's technically part of his passive. However, just, you know, a repositioning tool, and it's a fairly decent ranged repositioning tool at that. It's uh, uh, 600 units. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. And it can do a decent amount of damage provided enemies are actually standing in it, but you can't say no to a dash type ability, especially Ws. W dashes are not that common. It's mostly champions like E or something along the lines of that. It's good. Darius's Crippling Strike is usable. It's an auto attack reset that slows for like 90% for a bit. It's a cheap mana cost, it has a half cooldown and full mana refund on minion kill, but without the hemorrhage passive, it's not as good as it could be. Dinah's Pale Cascade is a solid ability. It's a shield that does damage, and I believe that the ratios are quite nice too. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, so the shield strength, it scales off of health and DP, so some tanks might want this, and does a decent amount of damage too. Not the worst ability out there. It has a relatively short cooldown too for this type of, type of ability. Draven's W Blood Rush is subpar. It's a quick boost burst of movement speed and uh, attack speed similar to Blitzcrank, but it has no reset mechanic because you don't have spinning axes. If it had the reset mechanic, it'd be good, but it's, uh, again, if you're looking for an attack speed movement speed buff, there are many others out there. Mundo's... What is this called again? Um, Hard Zapper. It's probably the worst ability or the worst W in the game in that can actually be used at that. It's it's so bad. It, it's good on Mundo because he has a lot of HP that he can build off of it, but the damage is really negligible, and even the detonation requires you to build bonus health, but even then, you need like 10,000 bonus health for this to actually do any meaningful amount of damage. And so, yeah, it's just not a very good ability. And you also injure yourself, right? Heart Zapper is effectively a worse version of Thick Skin, or Sets W. Actually, yeah, Sets W is probably the better choice. You never want this ability, ever. Most Mundo players don't even put a point into it unless they actually need to. Echo's Parallel Convergence is a usable ability. It's pretty solid. It does a lot of damage. In fact, if you're on... What do I say? I keep saying in fact. It does a lot of damage, especially with the passive, because against enemies below a certain amount of health, you do missing health damage. And if you put this on a fast AP auto attacker, like let's say Kog'Ma, well then again, you'd be losing the uh, his uh, bio Arcane Barrage. But even the shielding aspect is nice, because there's a delay, right? You have to put it ahead of time and it makes it easy to dodge, but if you do land it, you get a humongous shield and a 2.25 second AoE stun. This is a useful ability that is kind of broken, but then also compensated by the fact that it requires almost 4 seconds of prep time. Oh no, not 4 seconds of prep time, just 2.5, but still. It's a tough ability to land, but the payoff is certainly extraordinary if you do land it. Elise's W, uh, we're gonna put her here. She has two Ws, I guess I could try to go through, I can maybe put the average of them together. If it's just a vo Volatile Spiderling, because in her base form she is a human, Volatile Spiderling is a good ability. It's a fairly strong one too for harass, and I guess, yeah, we'll just talk about Volatile Spiderling. It's a, it's a solid ability, I would say. It's uh, kind of hard to control because it only targets whoever is available, but it still is good AoE damage. It'd be good for, you know, just harassing and poking in neutral. Evelyn's W is Allure, which is her charm. Uh, it's okay. It's it's usable. You can still detonate it because you just need to use an ability. And it's it's all right. It has like 45% magic damage or magic resist reduction, so it's a fairly strong ability, especially at max rank. It's got 2.25 second charm. It's okay. I I feel like it could be better, but this ability's danger stems from her being invisible up until the point where she's right in range to attack you. If this also had the invisibility thing attached to it, then it'd be one of the best abilities in the game. Ezreal's W is usable. 
It's, um, it requires a certain type of playstyle for it to take the most amount of effect, but it's not the most impactful W out there. Little six is W, Bountiful Harvest or whatever, not Bountiful Harvest, what is this called? It is... It is Bountiful Harvest. It's okay, you do need Lockdown to get the most benefit out of it. The damage and sustain is quite nice, because it's missing health damage and you also heal for a ton of damage as well. I just think that it's probably, it probably mandates someone with a lot of CC chaining like Fiddlesticks with the Sphere and then Silence. Fior's Repost, it is good as f this, similarly to Cassiopeia, Fior's Repost breaks matchups by itself. It would be useful on a lot of champions, not just her. Not being able to proc vitals because you don't have her passive accompanying it does diminish the value of this ability, but just making yourself completely immune to all hostile effects notwithstanding towers is pretty freaking broken. We don't need to really talk about why this ability kind of just destroys a lot of champions and makes some matchups just unplayable. It also has a 100% AP ratio, so you know if you want to put this on an AP champion, you can. This is W, Seastone Trident. It's, it's usable, it's on hit magic damage, it has a reset component similar to Darius, and uh, it's okay, you know, it's alright. It's just an auto attack empowerment, right? It's usable. Galios, Idol, or Shield of Duran, very solid ability. In fact, uh, I might put it in... I might actually put it in good as F because it's an AoE taunt that gives you a magic damage shield, so it's good for magic damage. It has a magic resist scaling, so you can give this on a tank and have the same, pretty much the same benefits if you want to, let's say, combine this with... I don't know, some other champion with some kind of immediate dash on like their Q or E, then this could be a very powerful ability. It still has an AP scaling to it, and uh, the damage is not bad too, because if you fully charge it, it's 90% AP. This is a really broken ability. Gangplank's Moose Scurvy, also broken. It's a CC cleanse. It's an anything cleanse. It can cleanse you out of Suppress. It can cleanse you out of um, Mordecai's Ultimate. It's just one of those, imagine if some other champion had this ability type abilities. Garen's Courage is solid. Garen's Courage is interesting. It has two components. It gives armor and magic resist just by farming minions, and after a certain point, you also get 10% of each. And then it, then it gives you a small shield, but 60% tenacity. So it's like a nerfed version of Fiora's W, only you can get a ton of damage reduction for a certain point. This is a good ability. You can apply to a lot of champions, give them a ton of free resistances, and then also give them damage mitigation, a shield, and somewhat of a bypass against crowd control. Nars W, we're gonna mostly talk about uh, Hyper, the mini form. So Hyper is, I would put it in good as f because it's percent max health damage on a 3 hit passive, and it gives you bonus movement speed. Granted, you only get it, or rather we can assume that any champion's ultimate would increase it, or Never mind, it's a passive, it's specifically a passive, but even 20% is not bad. It's a ton of max health damage, and you can apply this to an AP champion. So it's super good, and I think even without the Mega Form, it's a very, very valuable passive tap. It's somewhat of a nerfed version of Vayne's Silver Bolts, which I'll get into later. However, this one does have 100% AP scaling, so maybe it could do more damage. Gragas' Drunken Rage is usable. It's an auto attack empowerment that takes a bit of time to actually get going. Although it does supply you with percent damage reduction. Not a lot of it, you need AP, but still. Next one's gonna be Graze the Smokescreen. It's a solid ability, it can be very aggravating for certain matchups. It's not quite as consequential as Miasma or Repost, but it's still a very good ability there. Gwen's Hall Mist, however, is a very consequential ability. She is immune. Let's move on. This ability is super broken. Hecarim's Spirit of Dread, it's a solid ability, especially after they changed it a bit, so it gives you essentially percent Omnivamp. Uh, you heal for 20%, you basically get percent, 20% life still drain, and you get bonus armor and magic resist, and a decent amount of uh, AoE damage. You put this on Mordekaiser or something, this would be fantastic. This is like the perfect ability to give to Mordekaiser, to, uh, you know, perhaps Vladimir, maybe, I guess? Or like anyone who's just gonna be smack dab in the middle of the fight. In fact, I would replace uh, Swain's Vision of the Empire with Spirit of Dread. This is the perfect type of ability to give to someone like Swain. Or uh, Rumble, even. Scrap Shield is pretty good, but Spirit of Tread is also good. Uh, Heimerdinger's W is the Rockets. It's, uh, it's solid. It's a ranged harass tool. It does a lot of damage, and like, even without the upgrade, it does a ton of damage at base. Let's see. So, total magic damage, like, almost 100% AP. It's, it's a good ability. Very good. Alawi's Harsh Lesson. 
This one has a gap closer attached to it and it does percent health damage. So it's a bit better than Darius, Fizz, and stuff like that because it does have a dash attached to it. And even though you don't get the instant tentacle procs, just having a 4 second cooldown 30 mana uh, cost W with a bit of range, a bit of extra range, and then percent health damage is quite nice. Amelia's uh, Define Dance is solid. It's a ton of damage mitigation. And if you play an AP champion, you can get basically full damage immunity against physical damage. And then the actual damage part of itself is 120% AP. You know, that could do a lot of damage. I've seen a couple boss videos. You know, he goes AP Aurelia. He just one-shots everyone with W. It's a good ability. Next one's going to be Ivern, the brush. It's niche. It is the definition of niche. Janna's W is Zephyr. It's usable. It's a point-and-click harass tool that gives you movement speed while it's on off cooldown and uh, it does damage based on uh, a decent amount of AP and as a slow. It's okay. I think um, if it had a shorter cooldown, it'd be a lot better, but it's, it's usable. I might I might actually put in some parts. not... If you're looking for a point-and-click harass damage, you can, look, you can do better than this. Jarvan's Golden Aegis is usable. It would have been a subpar if prior to the change, but then ever since they gave it the uh, 1.3, oh no, the 70% the bonus AD ratio to make the shield actually scale, it's it's okay, it's usable. Would it be your first choice? It would not, but I don't think it's necessarily in subpar or booty. Jax's W is subpar. I say this because, again, there are tons of other auto attack reset abilities out there. Empower does have the advantage of being a 3 second cooldown and um, having you know, an AP ratio, but I would say more champions would rather just have Alawi's W, which is just an infinitely better version. Or even Darius gives a slow, or Fizz it has like the reset component to it. Jax's W is it's probably the weakest auto attack empowerment out of all of them. I understand that it can be used on Leap Strike, but then you would need Leap Strike. Oh my goodness, my throat is giving out. That's the one problem with making these videos. I do it all in one take, and that means uh, if I talk for like an hour straight, my throat hates me. Jace's W, we're going to specifically talk about Hypercharge. Hypercharge is a solid ability. It's not that great on Jace because he doesn't build on hit effects, but... Oh wait, never mind, it's Hammer, okay. If it's Cannon, because it's what whatever forms are default. If Jace starts at, as a Cannon then, or a Hammer, then it becomes Lightning Field. Lightning Field is a rather underwhelming ability on Jace, but on any other champion, it'd be broken. It gives you essentially infinite mana. And then it has a similar kind of like AP, like field damage kind of thing, AoE ring, similarly to Hecarim's Spirit of Dread, but it has a 100% AP ratio. Uh, we're going to assume it's at caps out of rank 5, by the way, because you give this to a regular champion, they don't have 6 ability points on their W. So it caps out of 380, but still has a 100% AP ratio and 18 mana restore on hit. A ranged AP champion would love this. They might not be able to make the most out of the close-up range or close-up damage, but you know, you could give this to... Maybe Morgana, or eh, not, not Morgana, let's say, I, I, maybe even a peach, uh, tank champion might want this. Right? You could give this to, uh, what's a tank champion with like an AoE field? You know, heck, give it to Mundo. No, never mind, Mundo doesn't build mana, what am I saying? <laughs> but you get the idea. Infinite mana sustain plus just a token bit of damage, but if you build AP, it actually does a ton of damage, and it has a fairly low cooldown and mana cost. It's pretty good. And it's actually broken, never mind. Jin's Deadly Flourish is a solid ability. It doesn't require um, any other component of his kit to actually be used, and it's a long-range pick potential tool. It's not the best crowd control tool out there, but for like backline support, it's a very good ability. Jinx's Zap is usable. It's the worst version of Jin's, kind of, sort of. I mean, it does more damage, and it doesn't require prior existing damage to apply the root, so I might actually just put it here. It's a good harass tool as well. It has I think like 120%, 130% AD ratio. 160, excuse me, it's 160. Alright, never mind, it's a good ability. Kaisa's Void Seeker, it's usable. It's a long range poke tool. You don't get the second skin, however, you need the uh, you need Kaisa's passive to get caustic wounds. Like this part. Otherwise, it's it's okay. It has you know 18 AP ratios to it and you don't get the evolution either. So it's usable but it's severely nerfed without without a passive. Callista Booty, it's Sentinel. Sentinel is trash. This doesn't do jack. Like, this does nothing. You you don't even get- I mean, I guess you can get this, but you need her, uh, wait a second. Does Callista's Black Spear accompany her- 
as a passive or is it part of a W? I'm not sure actually. Uh, okay, you know what? We'll just assume that you can apply this to anyone. Even with this part, with the, like, the max health damage, it's still bad. Like this, this passive is trash or this W is trash. Karma's focused resolve is a usable ability. Without mantra, it's heavily nerfed. It's not as good as it could be, but it's still fairly decent, right? You get a two second root and it does a decent amount of damage if you build AP. Uh, all renewal does is just give you a longer root duration. It actually makes it the second longest uh, CC in the game, but I would, I would say a base is still pretty good. Karthus is W. This is his wall of pain. It's... Hmm... It's usable. It is a long range setup tool. It gives vision. It reduces enemy magic resist and uh, slows them. It's a good area control tool. I would say it's definitely better than Anibius. Cassidin's Nether Blade is probably usable. Similarly to, I guess, Jax, all it really does, or not Jax, it, it, it has a few advantages. It gives you on hit magic damage, which is nice, it's always nice. And uh, it gives you, it does a ton of magic damage, especially with the AP ratio, 80% AP ratio, and it restores mana. For Cassidin, it doesn't do that good of a job restoring his mana because of how exorbitant the uh, Riftwalk mana cost becomes. But on other champions, this is effectively infinite mana. So I might actually put this in solid, because uh, you give this to some AP champion, even a ranged AP champion. This would be broken on a ranged AP champion. Katarina's W. It's we're not counting the uh, we're not counting the fact that she drops a blade. We're just talking about the uh, cleansing movement speed. Oh, it doesn't cleanse movement speed anymore. Okay, never mind. And it's just a free burst of movement speed for a very short amount of time. It's subpar. It doesn't really do much. Chaos thing, what is it called again? Yeah, yeah, like Celestial something. Celestial Blessing. It's a heal, bonus movement speed for her and one other ally. It's a solid ability. It could be better on someone who can actually build AP. Like, uh, Kale does build AP, but she builds mostly like attack speed on hit, so sometimes she doesn't get as much benef benefit from this. So it's okay. King's W. Uh, we're talking base king because you don't have the passive transformation. It is subpar. It's a worse Belveth W. If it was Rost W, then that'd be a lot better, but at base king, it doesn't really do much. Kenan's W is probably booty because it's a very trashy version of Cassidy's W or like most other champions in fact because all you get is this part you don't get this you, you don't get the active part you just get this and this sucks this is a three hit passive or like a three hit proc type ability that just it's really bad it's really bad Kha'Zix's void spikes is subpar the evolution is what makes it good the base version is not that great Kindra's W is Wolf, whatever it's called. Is she summons Wolf. Hmm, I mean, the healing is it's okay. It's neutral heal, kind of to an extent. But what really makes this ability hurt a lot is the marks, and you don't get marks. So Wolf is uh, probably this is really bad. This is a really bad ability without uh, Kindra's passive. Clud's Violent Tendencies is usable. It would be a lot better if you can control it. Again, that's something I think a lot of Clud players will want to be able to do. Uh, just like four attacks, it's Hail of Blades on an ability, and then the fourth it does a lot of damage. So it's an okay ability if you can control it. It has a low cooldown at higher, uh, at max rank, which is very nice to have. Uh, it's more consistent at higher rank, but just I think you would probably want something you can actually control. I know I put Briar up here, but Briar's different. The payoff is so much bigger than Clets, and uh, there are ways you can somewhat control it if you, depending on what you, which champion you put it on. Kogma's Bioarcane Barrage is probably niche. It is interesting. I closed this window by accident. Bioarcane Barrage gives you bonus percent health damage and bonus attack range. Ironically, I think this would be better on a melee champion, not a uh, ranged champion, because you still get you know 210 bonus attack speed. Like imagine if you gave this to Trindomir or something. I just think that it requires a very specific type of Kogma playstyle or like kind of build. And uh, you give this to like Kale, that'd be helpful, or you give this to like and honestly any AD carry. I feel like Bioarcane Brush would be good on other marksmen. Like imagine if you gave this to someone who's actually mobile, like Kaisa or something. But still, it's kind of niche. It's a very specific type of uh, play, or it mandates a very specific playstyle that not every champion will want. Cassante's, what is this called again? It's the stance. I just forget what it's called. Uh, Pathmaker. It's very good. It's a good ability. I'll put it in 
probably good as F because unlike Irelius, it actually has crowd control attached to it and uh, it can scale off of, uh, and also does max health damage. Uh, you don't really need this, it would be good on the tank, but just giving getting unconditional damage reduction uh, up to 65% at that, and it also is a 1.25 second stun and knockback that you can channel for up to 1.5 seconds. It's a solid ability, this does not matter, just the base version is still very powerful. LeBlanc's Distortion, good as F, it's a dash ability, it does damage, and then you can blink back to it. It's mobility, it's engage, it's disengage, it's harass, it's wave clear, it's everything. Oh my god, I can feel my voice giving out. I'm wondering if I should take a break or if I should just power through it. We're at the second half of the tier list, maybe I should just... Alright, I might need just like a second, just wow. There were a few times where my voice was actually just like breaking on me. Uh, Leeson Safeguard and Iron Will is a good as F ability. Repositioning, that can be used on a, uh, a ward or a champion and it gives you a small shield it's probably better on an ap champion or it's definitely better on an ap champion but that bonus omni vamp is life steal and spell vamp this can make some champions unkillable give this to vlad oh my goodness he'd be so broken like this would act that would actually be disgusting or imagine give this to no i was gonna say give it to nasus because of wither but no like oh my god imagine giving any champion just free 26 26 omni vamp forget this like forget the safeguard component just iron will is crazy uh, Leona's Eclipse is a, it's a solid ability, it's an on-demand aftershock, and that can actually be quite nice on some champions, especially tanks. Uh, Lilia's W is the Watch Out Eep, there I said it, it's, uh, it's, it's okay, it's subpar, um, actually no, it might be useful, because if you gave it to someone like, who had Briar Q, or like someone to actually lock down a target, and it would be guaranteed. And the benefit of Lilia's W is that it has a huge amount of damage if you land the center of it. The center of it is 105% AP, 480 base damage. So if you have some way to lock down, let's say, uh, well, what's a, what's a lockdown attached to like an E or something? You get the idea. Like if you had Darius pull or something, you would just guarantee the, uh, well, Darius would not want to take Lilia W. He doesn't build AD uh, or AP. But you get the point. It's better on other champions besides Lilia, because Lilia's only way to set up is Lilting Lullaby, and that commits the entire ultimate for it. But if you had an easy trade combo, that'd be very nice. Lissandra's W, Ring of Ice, is good as F. It's an AoE instant CC for in a large area. It actually just recently got buffed too. It went from 1.5 seconds to 1.65 seconds. It's instant, almost no cast time, or actually no cast time at all. It's in an AoE, and it does a fair bit of magic damage. It's a fantastic ability, relatively kind of a middling cooldown, but a very low mana cost. It's awesome. Lucian's Arden Blaze is subpar. If you put this on an AP champion, they could take better advantage of it because it has a 90% AP ratio, but it has just too high of a cooldown, and it doesn't do that much besides just damage. If you want like a ranged harass damage, you can go for anything else. I, I still think Ash's W would be better, or like Elise's Volatile Spiderling, maybe. I just think it's subpar. Lulu's W. This one is, I believe, I can't remember if it's health picks or whimsy. It's whimsy. Okay. So if you cast it on yourself or an ally, you get bonus movement speed and attack speed, which is what I was talking about before. It is, um, it's essentially a better version of uh, Blitzcrank and Draven W. You can cast it on yourself, you can cast it on an ally, or you can cast it on an enemy. It's a point and click two second polymorph. One of the best abilities, or one of the best Ws in the game, I would say. Lexus W is her shield. It's it's uh, solid. Actually, I would say it's solid. It can shield herself, it can shield the team, and if you get all the members of your team, that's a pretty substantial shield. Malphite's W is rock solid. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to. <laughs> so, the catch is that you don't get the full extent of um, of uh, Thunderclap because of Granite Shield, but even without that, just having on hit damage, you give this to any other champion who wants to build armor, it still does the same purpose. And it's good for wave clear, it's good for damage, it's got like the empowered auto attack. And the 30% bonus armor is still nice to have, it's a solid ability. Malzahar's W's Voidlings, whatever it's called, it is pretty bad without the Malefic Visions and without uh, Call of the Void or Nether Grasp, it's really bad. Maokai's Twisted Advance is fantastic, a point and click dash that roots. And it roots for I think like 1.4 seconds, it's not bad. And uh, this would be very good to have for a lot of champions, not even tanks. It could be good on skirmishes and stuff like that too. Master's Meditate is niche. So on Yi, it's pretty good for the auto attack reset. That's what most Yi players use it for. If you play an AP champion, 
then this becomes a lot stronger because you get a far greater heal. So this could be pretty good for sustain, but uh, it's just, I think, really depends on what you're looking for. And I don't think many people want to choose Master Chief's W. Milio's W is, I think, the campfire, right? By the way, if you hear background noise, I apologize. I think uh, my family just came home. It's uh, currently 6 o'clock, so they're back from work. If you hear any rumbling or like humming in the background or any like background noise, I'm sorry about that. I'll try to edit it out, but it's a very long video as it is. Cozy Campfire is niche. It increases range. It is a regeneration passive, and uh, this could be good depending on what kit you have. The extra range is nice. It's just niche. Misfortune's W is Strut. It's, uh... I'd honestly say this is basically... It's kind of like a better version of... It's actually not better. Kind of. It is a better version of Draven and Blitzcrank's Ws. But not quite as good as Lulu's uh, Whimsy, I would say. I think solid though, because it's a 4 second attack speed buff up to 100% and passive movement speed that automatically procs at max when you cast the active component. So it's like an infinitely better team on W, which I'll get into in a minute. Mordekaiser's indestructible, I think. Yes, because uh, Brahms is unbreakable. Yeah, indestructible. This is cool. This is a cool ability. Uh, it can. It doesn't require the rest of his kit. And uh, if you have a fast way to rack this up, this is a shield that can turn into a heal. So it can counter Grievous Wounds, uh, because you don't have to consume it and turn into a heal. It's a strong ability to have, and if you can rack up damage very fast, then a 30% max HP shield is definitely not bad at all. And it doesn't require an AP champion. It could be a tank, it could be a, a AD champion, since there are no ratios to it. Next one is Morgana's Tormented Shadow. It's usable. It's damage in an area, and uh, I believe by damaging an opponent or a champion or a monster, the cooldown's reduced by itself. So it's okay. It's just that you need kind of you kind of need a very long lasting CC to actually make this ability hurt, and uh, not many champions have that besides Morgana. Nefiri's W. It's a point and click long range dash that stops at the first enemy champion hit. It's solid. There are better dash abilities out there. I would say you still would want to have like Mokai's Twisted Advance or a different ability I'll talk about in a moment, but it's a, it's a good ability. You don't get that much damage because you don't have the pack mates, but just Hound's Pursuit is, it makes up for that by having a humongous uh, base range of 700 and it's point and click too. So the only, actually the only caveat is that it can be canceled. Like you can interrupt the channel component. So maybe I might put it lower, but still it's good. Uh, Nami's Ebb and Flow is a solid ability, damages and heals. It can be used in a lot of scenarios and even without her passive, it's still a good ability. Nasus's W is bullshit. Wither, similarly to Fiora, similarly to Cassio, just breaks certain champions. Give, put this on, oh my gosh, like it's balanced on Nasus because it's freaking Nasus, he sucks. But imagine putting this on an assassin or even like another, imagine giving this to like Lucian's W with Wither. He can wither the enemy AD carry and just beat them every time because they're permaslowed, permaslowed. It's, it's, this ability is a war crime. Look at this. It's point and click, 700 range. So you can use this even against Caitlyn, even against Ash, like anyone with a pretty significant amount of range, you can use this against Senna. And it is a 95% slow and a 71% attack speed crippled for five seconds. And if with a sufficient amount of ability haste, this actually has permanent uptime. This ability cheats. I hate it so much as a top laner. And even if you're not playing in an attack speed champion, like even if you're playing Silas or Mordekaiser. This sucks. I hate Wither so much. It's busted. Nautilus is uh, Titan's whatever it's called. It's a uh, pretty solid ability. It's a shield based on a portion of your max health and it also gives you some bonus damage. This is kind of a, I would say it's like a, it's on par with Malphite's Thunderclap, just, um, you know, with different, different purposes and different aspects to it. Nico's W is the uh, shapeshifter. I'm going to put this in solid not for the shape-shifting component well actually no the shape-shifting component is quite good it's a decoy and depending on how you use it you can uh, actually escape a lot of tricky situations especially with the uh, invisibility aspect to it but this is the good part uh the on hit effects if you give this to um you know an ad carry this would be a very good ability to have on any uh, on a marksman honestly uh nidalee's w we're talking about just her i think it's bushwhack right eh. It's bad. It's really bad. Without without the Prowl component to it, it's really bad. Neela's W, Jubilant Veil, vale, is good as F. I don't need to explain why. It's basically a Jax Counter-Strike in an AoE. And it's bonus movement speed too. 
It does have an obscenely long cooldown, but once again, this ability could break matchups by itself. Nunu's W, biggest snowball ever, it's solid. It's a fantastic engage tool and surprisingly easy to maneuver around. It's not as difficult as it looks. Definitely have a lot more maneuverability and control than Scion's unstoppable onslaught. So it's a very reliable tool. And it's also hard to challenge because the snowball hitbox is in front of Nunu. So you can't like Pantheon dash to him or Lee Sin Q or do something to kind of like dash behind him or to like interrupt him because you'll crash into the snowball. So it's got like built-in counterplay resistance, which may not be the most healthy design, but whatever, it's a fair ability. Nocturne's W is the spell shield that comes with the attack speed component to it. Solid. It's not as matchup breaking as some of these champions, like I still would want Fiora's Repost, but being able to mitigate or being able to nullify an entire champion's ability can also break a lot of champions. Like having a spell shield is fantastic and you can get up to 100% attack speed too. Olaf's W, tough it out. It's a solid, it's a solid move. It gives you a shield and it gives you bonus attack speed. It could be good for certain champions, I think. Maybe Jax will want this too. This could be good ability on Jax. This could be good on just anyone with on-hit effects, honestly. You can give this to a ranged champion. This would probably be better on a ranged champion. So instead of like, let's say, Misfortune's movement speed, you would be getting a shield. So, could be helpful. Oriana's W is Command Dissonance. Because you don't have the ball, it just activates where you're standing. And I'd say that's uh, usable. It does a lot of damage in an area, but not having ranged applications to it because you don't have the ball kind of sucks. Orn's... Bellow's Breath, it's a solid ability, very solid ability. It's percent max health damage, it makes you unstoppable during that time, and you apply the Brittle Effect, because the Brittle Effect is not attached to, uh... Oh, never mind, it is. Well, okay, here's the thing. The Brittle Effect is registered as a status effect. It is a universal status effect. It increases the uh, tenacity aspect of it. However, I without the passive, uh, Orn's passive, you can't proc it with a basic attack. You have to use a crowd control to activate the Brittle. Even so, Bell's Breath does a lot of damage. It's a good ability to have, it has no scaling required, so you give this to a tank champion, they will benefit just as much as Orn. You just need another crowd control ability to go with it. Oh my goodness, these videos are so long. Pantheon's W is busted. It's a better version of Maokai's W, in some ways and worse than others. It's a stun as opposed to a root, which makes it better in that regard. However, Maokai's root lasts longer and it makes him untargetable. However, Maokai's dash range is a lot shorter than... Um, it's a lot shorter than Pantheon's W dash range, which is uh, 650, I believe, 600. So, Shield Vault is just a really good ability to have. You don't even need the Mortal Will aspect, just a point and click dash and a stun on top of it. That's excellent. It's an excellent ability. I think um, it would be better used on a different champion because imagine if Silas had this. Oh my god. You lose the healing aspect, but imagine a point and click. Yeah, you're basically trading the healing component of Kingslayer. For the uh, for a one second stun, but I wanna, I would honestly say that could actually be better. Or no, you know who would make who would, who would benefit more from this is uh, Echo. I feel like Echo would love this ability because he would have two point and click dashes in that regard. Poppy's steadfast presence is niche. It's not like Cassio. I know it has the same implications as Cassio, but unlike Cassio, it's not as universally applicable. Poppy's W. Actually, maybe I'll put it in solid because you still do get the movement speed and the damage reduction, or rather the armor and magic resist. So it's pretty solid. Pike's W is Ghostwater Dive. Ghostwater Dive is probably usable. I would say it's usable because in order to increase the movement speed from Ghostwater Dive, you need lethality, and only Pike gets to kind of build lethality in that way, so it's not the best ability out there. I think you probably would just be better off having, um, like, uh, what was the champion I talked about with movement speed? Like, maybe Misfortune W, or what's another stealth ability? I forget which one I was talking about, but you get the idea. It's like Akshan or Pike, kind of, sort of. Next one, Kiana's Terra Shape. Terra Shape is probably booty because without the ability to actually use Terra Shape, like throw it out, all it really gives you is bonus attack speed and bonus on him magic damage. The on him magic damage is nice, I guess, but like, okay, it is also a dash, never mind. So you don't really need to throw her Terra Shape if you, if you don't want to, you could just keep it. And it gives you a 300 range dash, it's a fairly low cooldown, and it uh, gives you a fair bit of on hit magic damage if you gave this to an attack speed champion. Then, you know what, actually never mind, it's pretty good, it's usable. I'd say usable. Quinn's heightened senses is niche. Actually, no, it's just bad. Because what really kind of, what really shines about this ability is not the active component, it's the passive, but you need a uh, Harrier to use that. So, it's not really that great. 
Rakan's Grand Entrance. Is it? Wait, actually, is it Grand Entrance or Battle Dance? Oh, it's Grand Entrance. Rakan's Grand Entrance is really good. I still think uh, Pantheon and Maokai are a bit better. Yes, Rakan has AoE, but uh, just having point and click assures more consistency and therefore it's better. It's still a very good ability. Ramus's W Defensive Ball Curl is niche. I would say it'd be better, but you kind of need Spike Shell to actually like make use of this ability. It still gives you a ton of resistances. It's a worse version of uh, Leona's W, I would say. Yeah, it's basically a worse version of Leona's W without the passive. Rek'Sai's W is just the burrow and unburrow aspect to it, which is you do get Tremor Sense, and you do get a knockup, right? So it's still usable, kind of, sort of. Uh, Rel's Ferraments, you crash down and mount up are solid. It's good for uh, just, it's a good engage tool. It's a good armor tool, I believe. Uh, you also get like what? Yeah, it does. Uh, you get a shield, you get uh, a huge AoE knockup, and then while mounted or while dismounted, you get bonus armor, magic resist, attack speed, and range. You do get slowed, but this is a, uh, it's a fairly good ability. It's just not that broken on Rel because she's kind of a weird clunky champion. But if you gave this to a more mobile tank, then who knows? Renata's Bailout is usable. I'd still say that giving, uh, i say Lulu's Whimsy is just better. I know you can cheat de death with it, but I still think Lulu's is just better. Renekton's Ruthless Predator, or whatever it's called. Actually, uh, what is Renekton's W? Is it Ruthless Predator? Yes. You don't get the Empower Stun, and without the Empower Stun, it's basically oh, just much worse than Pantheon's uh, W. The benefit is that you do get on hit effects twice and it does scale off AD, however the real part of it is the uh, the empowered attack and with that fury you don't get that. Rengar's battle roar is probably bad. You need the empowered version. You really need the empowered version. At base, you can heal a little bit or a fair amount actually. You can heal, you can heal a fair amount, but you really want this. This is what makes Rengar's W so stupid. And without that, I'd probably say subpar. Actually no wait. It is a better Mundo W. It's definitely better than Mundo W. I can't put them in the same tier. Riven's W, Key Burst, is, or Key Strike. I think it's Key Burst or Key Strike. It's solid. Similarly to Lissandra, it's a uh, instant activation uh, stun. However, it has an actual cast time, so it's worse than Lissandra's in that case. And though it's a stun, it's a much shorter duration. I think Lissandra's W is still better overall, so... Riven's is, uh, it's solid, actually I might, yeah, I'll just put it in solid, it's still a good ability, it's instant AoE CC. Rumble Scrap Shield is subpar, you need heat, you need the heat for more value out of Scrap Shield. It's a decent ability at base because it does come with a, a fairly short cooldown, it's only 6 seconds, it's a very, it's an interesting shield, it does scale off of max HP, but I think, actually I might put in usable then, because it does have max HP scaling now, uh, I would say it's still worse than, um, it's still worse than Nautilus W or Olaf W. I'd say it's a, like a, it's a degree below. Next one is Rise's Rune Prison. It is probably subpar. If it still had the base root and not only when it was empowered, then it would be a fantastic ability. But since it doesn't, it's uh, it's a pretty bad ability. Samira's Blade Whirl is a temporary wind wall, but that can make all the difference. It's good as hell. Sejuani's W, Fury of the Fury of the Flail, the whatever it's called, I forget actually. Um, it's a solid ability actually because it does eight percent of her max health in damage, and it also has an AP ratio or Winter's Wrath. The uh, Fury of the whatever was the last one, but it's a it's a good ability I would say. Actually, maybe not solid. I put it in usable. No, I'll put it in solid. It's a good ability. Senna's Curse of the Black Mist is a solid ability. It's a slow projectile that can be easily avoided, and it does have a cast time to it, but it could be up to a 2 second AoE route. Last Embrace. Curse of the Black, Black Mist is her cloak. But uh, Last Embrace is a good ability. Seraphine's W is Surround Sound. I'm gonna put it in usable. Surround Sound needs to be double cast. Technically no, if she's already shielded. Thing is that if you have an ally who can shield her, then she can get the empowered version of it as well. Um, but without stage presence, then uh, you can't really easily access surround sound. So you're only really getting shield and movement speed. It's okay. It's okay. There are better shielding ones out there. Sets W is broken. Oh my goodness. Now this is Mundo's W if it was actually good. You can do a huge amount of freaking true damage just by building, or just by taking damage. Like this, 
It's a shield, it's a counter punch. It is so broken. Like, holy crap, this ability is broken. Like, I would say even if you don't build AD on him, even if you just have like the 25%, if you give this to a Scion or a Mundo, oh my word, they'd be doing so much damage just from like having 7,000 max health. This ability is awesome. Shago's W Jack in the Box is good as F. It's a control tool, it's a disruption tool, it's a harass tool. You give this to an AP champion, and then you get Jack in the Box, which does a crap ton of damage. And then you have 1.5 second fear, technically 2 seconds if you count the root after it, or the root with it. And then, yeah, it's just, it's, it's Teemo's Mushrooms, but better. And it's not even attached to an ultimate. Shen's W is niche. It's a worse version of Neela's Jubal and Veil, basically. You do need the Spirit Blade, though. And without the ability to recall it with Q, you can't position it that easily. So never mind, it's just bad. It's just a bad ability. Shivana's W Burnout is subpar. It's worse than Jace's Lightning Field or Hecker and Spirit of Dread. The benefit of Burnout is that you can extend it by auto attacking, which can actually increase the damage of it. The only problem is that it scales off AD, not AP. If it was AP, then I think actually it used to be AP, I believe. But if it was AB, AP, then maybe, but nah, this ability is just worse than uh, Hecarim's W or uh, Jace's W. Singe's, like, whatever sticky uh, uh, adhesive, mega adhesive, is a solid ability. It's a worse version of Cassius W, but it's still, you know, it's still really good. Grounding can really mess up a lot of champions. You don't get the extra effect of flinging a champion into it causes them to get rooted, but it's still a very good ability that can disrupt a lot of champions' tempo and their momentum. Scion's W, Soul Furnace, is broken. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This shield, the, the, this, like even without the, oh my god, this passive. Holy crap. Give this to an a, a Marsman. You give this to a Marsman, oh my god. Give this to an AP champion like Vladimir, oh my god. Give this to any champion. Oh my god. Soul Furnace is horse. This ability is a crime against humanity. Cypher's W Ricochet, it's usable. It's wave clear, and uh, that's it. Scarner's W Crystalline Exoskeleton is also usable. It's an infinitely worse Scion W. Moving on. Well, you get it. You do get movement speed, but realistically, I would want to just have Scion's W. It's a lot better. Sona's W, which is the Aria of Perseverance. No, that's Song of Solidity, right? Wait, no, which one's this? Is it Aria of Perseverance? It is. It's her healing and shielding thing. It's a solid ability. It's a better Seraphine W because it doesn't require any pre-existing condition, and it can be used to just heal a bunch of champions. Or no, it only heals two, but it gives shield to everyone else after that. You don't get the uh, the power cord aspect to it. Or no, the power cord aspect's already here. So you do get all of this though. Next one is Soraka's W, Astral Infusion. It's a solid ability. I don't think it would be broken because it drains your HP. And unless you have a way to heal yourself with QE or passive, I don't think this ability is uh, all that good. If you pick this on, let's say Vladimir, and you made like this weird Vladimir support kind of playstyle, then maybe, but it's, it's a good ability. It's still a very good ability though. Swain's Vision of the Empire is niche. It's vision control, and that's about it. You don't get the bonus HP from the Soul Fragment because you don't have his passive. So all you're getting is just this. And the reveal, of course, the reveal duration. It's just niche. It, it, if you want to play a very like, you know, safe control based playstyle, then it's it has a purpose. I wouldn't say it's bad. Silas's Kingslayer, it's solid. It's a point and click burst of damage, does quite a bit of damage, and it heals you for quite a amount. I would put it in good as F. Uh, actually, you know what? I might. It's it's kind of stupid. <laughs> Sindra's W is Force of whatever it's called. This ability is subpar. I say subpar because without Dark Sphere, all you can really grab are minions or monsters. That's it. So you also don't get the Transcendent bonus because you don't have her passive. Therefore, it's a pretty lousy ability. Tom Kench's Abyssal Dive. Usable. I would still just rather take Maokai or Pantheon's W. However, this is a free target dash. This is a free target dash. So you can use it to escape as well. But didn't I include a champion that has a free target dash that could be used anywhere? Uh, oh yeah, Corky. Corky's Valkyrie. You might as well just use Corky's Valkyrie at that point. Next one's gonna be Talia's W. This is Unraveled Earth, or is that no? Unraveled Earth is her E. This one is the seismic shift or seismic uh, 
Seismic Shove is it's okay, it doesn't do any damage, I still think it just would be better to have like any other crowd control ability, so it would be put in usable. It's in usable. Talents W is Rake. It's a solid ability. The reason why, it's because it's a short cooldown, uh, 7 seconds, and it does 120 bonus AD and 250, uh, 250 base. It's a good wave clear ability, it's a good poke tool, and uh, has fairly decent range and AoE coverage. It's good for just harassing in general. You don't get Blade's End, the stacks, but you don't really need it. It's a good ability. Tarix W, Bastion. Bastion is busted. This makes any champion that you put with it, right? You, ta you tag an ally with it, and then you can just basically extend any of your abilities off of that. Like, imagine you put Bastion with, um, Frick, Zerath Q, Bastion with, like, anything. Like, Bastion is balanced on terror. If you gave this to another champion, you attach an ally to it, or you give it, it's basically Orianna's ball, but you can use your own abilities with it. Like, imagine if you had, oh my word, what's a, what's a good ability that, <sighs> I'm trying to think here. What's a good ability? Bastion with some champion ultimate. What's a champion ultimate that's like super crazy broken? Whatever, you get the point. Bastion is arguably one of the best Ws in the game, in concept, if we isolate it from a skit. Teemo's W move quick is subpar. Just pick MF strut. It's MF strut, but worse, because you don't get attack speed. Just pick MF. Vesh's W dark passage is solid. It can be used to engage. It can be used to, or not engage. It can be used to allow someone to a fight faster. And it can also be used to rescue someone from a bad situation. It's a very good ability. Next one is Tristana's Rocket Jump. It's a solid ability. Kind of like Quirky, it's a dash in or dash out. Uh, it also can do a bit of damage. So it's uh, probably a little bit better than Quirky's Valkyrie, but they have different applications. Trondle's Frozen Domain is solid. It's good for the type of champions that would want to build it, and I would say a lot of champions would want it because you get bonus movement speed, a ton of attack speed, and bonus healing. This is a, I guess a side grade or like a side grade to Olaf's W. I feel like Olaf might want to have this sometimes instead of tough it out. Or you might want to give this to another duelist champion who can afford to not require their W, right? You want to give the bonus attack speed. Just that's 110% bonus attack speed. It's really good. Lasts for 8 seconds. So if you have even a small amount of ability haste, you can have permanent uptime on his W. Ton of movement speed, so you can move around a lot. So you can use it to chase after someone or run away from them. And 25% healing from all sources. It's really good. Trindamir's Mocking Shout is usable. Uh, reduces enemy AD, it's a point and click, or not a point and click, it's an auto target AoE attack damage reduction and slow. It's a long lasting slow too, as well. I think um, maybe you might not want this, like actually, no I still think most champions would rather just have like Pantheon's W or something along the lines of that, but it's still a good ability. I don't want to put it in subpar because it has a lot of potential, especially if you have the AD attack damage reduction, this can nerf a ton of champions. Twisted Fates pick a card, busted. It's point and click mana regeneration, it's point and click wave clear, and it's point and click stun. One of the best abilities in the game. Twitch's W is subpar. It's good on Twitch because it racks up the uh, the poison the poison stacks on it, but otherwise all you're just getting is a small slow. You basically have, if you're just talking about the slow field, there's Cassiopeia's W, there's Cinch W, you can get anything better than Twitch W. I'm gonna actually just put it in booty. Udir, his W stance, is subpar. It's a shield that heals the next two auto attacks. It is more useful than these abilities for sure, but it's definitely not one that anyone would want outside of if you have the, uh, the Udir passive. Urgot's Purge is broken. Urgot's Purge is so broken. Oh my goodness. You basically get permanent 3.0 attack speed. Its chase is hypercharged like the cannon form, but infinitely better. It's so good. With Urgot W, instant max stack Darius passive, instant max stack, uh, any three hit passive, but mostly hit passes are on W, which is kind of a problem. But you get the idea. Purge is crazy. Purge does. It's balanced on Urgot. I mean, yes, without, pur without Echoing Flames, you don't get that much damage out of it, but screw it. It's such a good ability. Zero mana cost as well for 3.0 fixed attack speed. And the range is not depend. It doesn't lock your range at. Or oh no, never mind. It does. Ah, uh, it does. Never mind. Okay. You know. So if you have, if you're playing like a longer range champion, you, you get nerfed to a smaller range. But still, this is such a fantastic ability, even outside of Urgus Kit. Within Urgus Kit, it's still very good as well. Uh, Varus's Blighted Quiver is usable. I would say, Cassidy's Nether Blade is better. In you know, if we factor in the same context, actually no, not really, because Blighted Quiver does have the benefit of doing percent max health damage. Uh, after if you use abilities de to detonate it. So uh, you don't get the piercing arrow buff to it, but just this alone, it's pretty good. 
Vayne's Silver Bolts broken! Give this talk shine, he becomes the best champion in the game. Just imagine if you could combine Urgot Q or Urgot W with Vayne W. Vagar's W is... Subpar. It's dangerous on Vagar because he has a way of trapping you in place. And I know what you're thinking, if you have a point and click stun or whatever to kind of root them in place or keep them trapped. But Vagar also builds AP from his passive, that's what makes it such a damaging ability. Otherwise, it's a worse version of a certain other champion, which we're almost getting to in a moment. Belkos's W is... Void Rift, I believe. It's, it's okay. It's just damage, you can use it for wave clear, but you really need the passive. You really need Belkos's passive. In fact, I might put in subpar. Vex's personal space is usable. Without the fear, it's a lot worse. But it's still a damaging ability and a shield attached to it. It's not bad. Vi's Denting Blows is usable. It's different from Veins, so it's worse than Veins. However, it does give you bonus attack speed and 20% armor reduction. Are there instances where you would want Denting Blows over Silver Bolts? Probably. I still think Silver Bolts is better though, but that's why uh, Denting Blows would be in... Uh, I'm up with Denting Bolts and Solid. Kind of like Gnar, actually. Although Gnar... Gnar is... This, uh, okay, if I include Gnar in max health damage tier, then... Nah, you know what? We'll just put Gnar down here, actually, in retrospect. So Gnar would be... We're almost done. Okay, so Viego's W is just the Spectral Maw. It's a solid ability. It's a small dash, and it's also a, a stun that can stun for up to, I believe, 1.5 or 1.25. It's a good ability. Give this to an AP champion, they'll make better use of it, and uh, yeah. Victor's Gravity Field is... Booty. It's a worst. No, it's subpar. It's better than Twitch's, but not that much better. Like, you still would want to have Cassian be a W or something like that. Vladimir's Sanguine Pool is usable. It's on target ability for a period of time. It does drain a fairly substantial amount of your health, though. Uh, this could be consequential for champions who have no sustain, but it's still 2.5 seconds, I think, right? Or 2 seconds of on target ability, and it does do a decent amount of damage if you build health, so it has purposes. Then we have Volibear's W Frenzy. Volibear's W Frenzy is good. It's a very good ability. It can give you a ton of sustain, a ton of damage if you build this on a tank, like Scion. No, Scion wants his own W, but if you build a health scaler like Mundo, this would be such a good ability for Mundo, in my opinion. Like, a Frenzied Maul? Just give this to Mundo? Holy crap. He can abuse this to high heaven. It's a very good ability though. It's a ton of healing too. And so if you play a champion with a lot of like extended trades or all-ins, then this is one of the best abilities for that. Warwick's W is niche. It can give you a load of attack speed and movement speed, and it can also give you detection to low health enemies or whoever's nearby whenever you use W. And look at this, this is crazy. I just think that, uh, you know, it's really hard to gauge. Like, I don't want to put this in a regular tier because it's one of those abilities that's so endemic to just like how Warwick plays. That even though you could apply this to another champion, I feel like you would want something more consistent, like uh, Trundle W. So, mm, it's like a weirder version of Trundle's W, but it can be exponentially better than Trundle's W if you use it in the right circumstances. Wukong's Warrior Trickster. Broken. It is a nerfed version of Terex Bastion, but you can activate it on demand. And uh, it's a dash, it can go through walls, it's invisibility. This ability is cracked. I love it. I hate fighting it, but I love using it. Zaya's W is, um, what's it called? Her, her Deadly Plumage, I believe. Yeah, Deadly Plumage, it's a trashier version of any other attack speed buff in the game. It's like Blood Rush, kind of, where you really need her, the rest of her kit to actually get the most benefit out of it. I still think uh, you might as well just use Trundle W or MFW. It's kind of the same thing. You do get... 20% more damage, but still, it's just... I'll put in usable then. The 20% more damage does matter. But I still think like MF would be better, or if you give any other attack speed buff. Zerath W. Remember when I said that uh, Vagar's W is a worse version of a different champion's W? This is the champion I'm talking about. Zerath's W, Eye of Destruction, is powerful. It has, I believe, a 100% AP ratio if you hit the centerpiece, and because it has a target range of 1000, and, uh, you know, if you can find some way to, like, root them in place or, like, lock them down, that can do a ton of damage. So Eye of Destruction is very powerful. The only caveat is that its mana cost is quite high. But still, I would say a lot of AP champions would want it. Then we have Xin Zhao's Wind Becomes Lightning. It's usable. 
the real part or like the, the real benefit of uh, Shinchao's W is that it allows you to um, dash to the target after you strike them. But still being able to do, um, you know, being able to do this kind of damage on fairly decently short cooldown, not really that short. It's shortened because of three talent strike, but it's a good ability. It's a good harass tool. There are worse ones out there. Yasuo's wind wall broken. Moving on. Yonez's W spirit cleave is solid. I think uh, if you want a different harass tool, like Yonez is just better than Shinzao's. It's not the same exact hitbox, but it's still kind of the same purpose. York's W is that, that procession, whatever. It's bad. It's really bad. It's it's so bad. Just take Vagar Cage or something that actually has no counterplay attached to it. I know Vagar's Cage is E, but still. Yumi is question mark question mark question mark. Actually, no. Wait, 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 wait. Imagine attaching you and me to a Zerath or someone like that. Wait, never mind. This ability is like broken as shit. Like it's balanced on Yumi because all she can do is buff or like do a tiny bit of damage. But imagine you gave Yumi's W to. Oh my word, I, now that I think about it, give Yumi's W to friggin Morgana or someone they can attach to the AD carry and give them extra damage, extra CC, whatever. Never mind, Yumi's W might actually be one of the best abilities in the game. Like, period. It's just balanced on Yumi, but holy crap, imagine if this was on Fiddlesticks or like anyone who could just attach to a teammate and give them a whole bunch of stuff or just give a whole bunch of damage. Wow, this ability is actually just disgusting. Holy crap. <laughs> Uh, next one is W, Unstable Matter. It's probably subpar. It's good on Zack because he has his passive to decrease the cooldown of Unstable Matter. But without it, not so much otherwise because it's got a- It still has a fairly short cooldown of 5 seconds, but what you really want is that cooldown reduction thing right here. But without Cell Division, you can't access that. Zed's W, one of the best abilities in the game. This ability is Tarek's Bastion, but you can do it on demand. Give this to a Zerath. Suddenly, his Q has 2500 range, basically semi-global. Give this to a lot of champions, it would make them unreasonably broken. Uh, Zeri's W is her little little W strike thing, whatever it's called. It's usable. It's okay. Uh, Ziggs' Satchel Charge is niche. If you want to slow push the High Heaven, it's a fantastic ability, otherwise it's, it's okay. It's okay. I think um, it is niche ability. Zillion's W is the speed up or is- no, 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 wait, wait, that's his E. Zillion's W is rewind. Hold, 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 hold. Probably good as F. If you can spam your Q and E, if you use your Q and E and then you can use it again. Uh, it's only 10 seconds though, but still. Oh, Zillion's, Zillion's W might actually be super broken on certain champions. It's- I mean, but who would wanna who would have a Q and E that you would wanna throw away your W for in order to use them again? Maybe I don't know, there's a fair amount, I would say. There's a fair amount. So it's, it's a good it's a fantastic ability, what am I saying? Zoe's W is spell thief. It's solid. You can get access to summoner spells, active items, and bonus extra damage. It has some uses to it, and it can be applied to a lot of champions actually. Spell thief is not bad, it's not bad. And last but not least, Zyra. Zyra's W is useless. You need, um, or not useless, it's a question mark. You can, it's only related to her. So now we have arrived at the, the final verdict. Let's go into top 10. Which abilities are top 10? Obviously, Zed's up here, Yumi's up here, Twist of Fate's up here, uh, Sion's up here. Hmm, probably, maybe. Fiora? Cassio? Uh... Um... Hmm. I'll put Tarek. We gotta include Tarek. Probably Wukong as well. Yasuo. One more. I would say Vayne. No, not Vayne. I kind of want to put Shaco. I'm biased. Shaco or Gwen? Shaco or Gwen? Mm. Oh, this is a tough one. Zillion? No, not Zillion. Who would the last one be? I'm like torn. There's like... You know what? I'll do Nila. 
I think Nila works. So this will be our top 10. I have to arrange this in alphabetical order because I'm OCD like that. Yumi's down here. Uh, Twisted Fate's down here. Tarek, Nila, Sion, Fiora, Caspia. There we go. So these are my top 10. I think, uh, I don't think these are that disagreeable. I feel like these are fantastic abilities. I think that Zed, if you gave his W to another, to like a mage or something like that, that'd be so broken. Imagine Syndra with Zed's Zed W. No, she does need force of, force of will or whatever it's called. But still, you get the point. Zed W would be just broken on a lot of champions. Yumi would be the most broken ability in the game if it was on anyone besides Yumi. And yeah, so anyways, that's going to be the list for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with any of them. But for now, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you left a like and subscribed if you somehow made it this far. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsfam, join my Discord server, and check out my ability tier list on passives and ultimates if you haven't yet. But till next time, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Here's the final list. Actually, can I just do this? Sort of? No, that's even smaller. Whatever, this is the final list. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.